Um, so that was one of the core agents uh, that I was putting into U3 keys to auto install a core agent to have it talk back to a central utility. Um, of course, great, because they're starting to do some really neat stuff on the web side, being able to do automated injection and being able to actually install agents over doing injection instead of just doing this plain old, I dumped your database. Why not have root and take everything opposed to just taking the database? Uh, or just being able to do gets or just trying to be able to do outputs into forms. Why not have everything? Um, so I, I applaud them for transitioning and actually looking at things from the network level, the web level, as well as doing the client side level. Because again, when we're looking at trying to test these things, it's not just the front door. It's the front door, the side door, the back door, whether I can send client side email attacking and embed an agent into a Word document that is affixed to some coder that I found out through my information gathering on a forum, and then I go, oh, hey, you just download this. And then they download it and they install it into their app because their, their app's broken. Make yourself look like a genius on some of the boards. It's pretty easy. They'll come to you for answers, and it doesn't take a lot of setup time. Then send them some things. What's that? What are you talking about? Two. It's, it's called a license. They expire. But that's cool. Um, you guys use this before? Always fun? It's, it's the easiest way to get into a Windows box. If you can carry around a Firewire car, boot up Helix, connect your laptop to it, bounce it. So this is one that's really, really fun. Um, and Tom and I talked about this a while ago, and we made a couple of those drives. And it's, it's really, really dangerous. Because uh, do you, have you guys ever played with U3 drives and being able to like, turn them into CD-ROMs? So there's a, a few different images out there uh, that you can use to actually ISO against the U3 drives themselves. Once you do that, if you put it in an XP machine, it'll show up as a CD-ROM. Well, CD-ROMs and XP are great because most corporate environments don't turn off auto run. So now you can batch pulling out any information you want. You can pull out your MS cache. You can pull out all the different SAM files. You can pull out all of their internet history. You can pull out you know, the Sophia EXE that you were talking about for the VeriSign. You can pull out all sorts of different great information. You can also put stuff in, like using Hacksaw, which will actually make you know, some subs to the USB interface. Then after that, any time that something's going to get plugged in over USB, it'll start extracting that data. It'll run a job to package the data and then send it out to your Gmail account which is really convenient because now all you need to do is just kind of run around and plug in USB keys and go home and read your email, and you get all their data. Exactly. So it's a real functional way to get into an environment when you're walking through. And again, you know, since you've been able to go ahead and access where all the developers are, you know who they are, you know exactly what box to go to, just drop a USB key into it. I mean, you can take your chain at random, put hundreds of them outside, and just see how much you can get. But why not do a directed attack and actually go in and put it in the dev guy's box? Um, you can also use that to make tunnels. I make VNC shells. We'll package up Metasploit exploits and things like that so that we can make remote shell connections back so that if I can't get into it, again, I'll sit from their box and get into it, and I'm sure they have access. Um, I love this little keylogger. It's great. If you guys have never used Elite Keylogger, uh, it's one of the only ones that almost all the virus companies do not detect on. I mean, they, they don't. They pay to make sure that they don't. So it's excellent to use when you're in any of the environments. Plus, you get really neat things like you can make full remote control sessions over HTTP. You can be able to generate different keys for it. And you can continue to, to kind of manipulate that entire environment. And you can start hiding pieces of their desktop. You can start hiding all the logs. You can have it auto log and actually go real time. So there's real time key log viewers and things like that. Um, and then finally, being able to make a cheap leave behind is always good. So when you're doing any of this testing, again, when I say get in, get out, well, you can get in. You could be walking in, slamming USB sticks into something. It'll take you five minutes, and you'll root the whole environment. Then when you're done, 
go find an empty conference room, dump a little WRT and put Metasploit on it and have it call home to you. Boy, is it really fun to have a machine sitting in their network all day and all night. You want to test an app from the inside? There is no better way to do it than being inside. And then finally, there's all sorts of other types of fun toys. Uh, I was going to put a FlexiSpy one up there, but for some reason it didn't get in. Um, have you guys used FlexiSpy at all? So go to the go to website FlexiSpy.com, and it makes images for your cell phone. So you can take a cell phone, you can say what model number it is. So if you know after you're doing your intel gathering that your developer or someone in their staff has a particular model of cell phone or if they have a corporate standard, you can say give me an image for this and I want it to map back to this number. After you install that image on the cell phone, so you'll take it, it takes about three minutes to install. If you have a laptop with you, you can go in, swipe their cell phone from somewhere, whether it's inside, outside, you see them at a coffee shop. Dump this on their cell phone, their cell phone goes back to normal, makes a base image underneath it. And then after you've done that, you can now log into the phone, you can read all their SMS messages, you can listen in actively on calls as well as log and record calls. How beneficial would that be to your app testing if you could listen to what they talk about during the day on their phone? It would be neat. What is that called? FlexiSpy. Um, also being able to leave things like pen cams, stuff like that on people's desks. They're great leave behinds, right? If I can have full video, if I can have full audio. You can also script some of these to call home over wireless. Some of them have wireless connections in them. Um, and then speaking of cell phones, if you want no one to have cell phone signal, there's ways to do that too. And boy, is that effective when there's a problem and all of a sudden their phone goes out. Well, and everything else that's wireless in the area, depending on how big a one you get. But these are all different types of ways that, you know, not only are you going to test this front door, but now you're going to attack the company. Now you're going to attack this application like an attacker would. Because attackers don't stop ever, right? If it's their job to get in, they get in. Your boy who took the server, he, got, he couldn't get in from the outside, so he took it. So I, I kind of wanted to, to wrap this just by saying that all of these different methods that you're using right now to test front doors and back doors and code themselves, don't leave the simple stuff out because the more advanced our society gets, and we talked about this a ton last night, the more advanced and high tech that we get, the low tech attacks work every time. The more things that you're looking at in these little pinpointed views of technology are starting to be things that everybody protects against and they're missing the glaring holes like, hey, we spent a million dollars trying to do all this code security and everything else, but somebody walked in the front door and stole it. <laughs> Suck. You know, whoops, we should have locked the door. So just try and keep some of that stuff in mind or, you know, your employees that are coders that are out there posting your code in forums. Look for it. There's way easier to get compromised that way than it is trying to pound the application day and night to find some little tiny hole. You'll, you'll find it by Googling for your application and taking pieces of your code and just dropping them into Google and seeing what's out there. You'll find matches, trust me, I find them on every engagement. 